Well, it's been good to be back in the House of the Lord this morning. I would like to share a little something with you this morning when, uh, uh, before we get into the lesson. But uh, I was trying to pray about the services this morning and uh, <clears throat> just confessing my sins. And, uh, I was talking to the Lord about the mountains that we have. And, uh, you know, we all have mountains. Amen. We all have mountains, and there's there's mountains in my life, and there's mountains in everybody's life. But you know, he can give me the comfort and assurance that uh, that everything would be all right. He take care of me. I just wanted to pass that on to the church this morning. That if you've got yeah. mountains, uh, faith will move on. Uh, and so, just keep on keeping on because uh, there's a better day coming. And uh, like I say, we've all got mountains to uh, that's in front of us, but one day we'll quit climbing those mountains. Yeah, man. We'll past them and over them and through them, and uh, we'll be with the Lord. We want to try to study this morning a little bit in the book of Isaiah, chapter 5. <clears throat> Turn it after the book of Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1, and I, as I was reading this, it just caught me, and I said, well, uh, I know uh, another scripture that's just like this in the book of Solomon, I mean, Song of Solomon, but it's not. Uh, I, I, I looked, and I looked, but anyway, that's just food for thought. If you try to kind of restudy this a little bit, maybe you'll get a, a greater blessing. But anyway, now, in verse 1, of chapter 5 of the book of Isaiah. Now will I sing to my well-beloved. Now notice this. He's going to sing to his well-beloved. A song of my beloved. Touching his vineyard. So he's going to sing a song of God. His well-beloved. Uh, a song of my beloved. Uh, or a song of God touching Israel. And the Israel is his vineyard. And uh, so I, I, I studied on this, and I studied on this, and I thought, well, uh, the, I'm, I'm getting something wrong here, but it's not. He's, he's, he's right on. Isaiah was singing, or he was, he was singing to God about, uh, he was singing a song of God to God about Israel. And this morning, I got to thinking, Israel, his bride-to-be. And here, uh, in the Song of Solomon now, he gets it a little bit more clearer, and uh, he, he kind of puts it uh, in a different form, like man and woman. But here, he says, Now I will sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved, touching his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. Now, here is Israel over there now in their condition that they are in. And they would have had the, the beauty of all of this for the last 3,000 years had they obeyed the Lord. Right. And the same thing goes <coughs> for the Gentiles. And the Gentiles would have had a much better uh, knowledge and outlook on everything if they had obeyed the Lord. So we see here what happens, what, what, what God does for Israel, and what he has continued doing. But he says here in verse 2, And he fenced it, and gathered out the stones thereof, and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine press therein, and he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. Mm -hmm. Now here, look at these things that he built. He built a fence around this garden, and there was a reason he built, of course, was for protection, but also to, to, to uh, uh, help them in their, in their producing of fruits. Notice he says he, he built a fence and he gathered the stones out of it and he fixed the ground where the, it would cultivate good and all of this. 
and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with a choice choices vine. Now I'm I'm of the opinion that this choicest vine started with Abraham. Mm -hmm. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and those. That was his that was his that was his first encounter with uh, with starting the nation of Israel was that he spoke to Abraham and Ur and he said, You come on out. Right. So he he started that he started that vineyard with these choice plants. And so he did this and he and he fenced it and all of this. But there was another reason why that he did this this way, not only for their protection, but that they would have they would have this place where that they could they could make these grapes, grow these grapes, and he fixed a, 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 a thing for them, a, a trough like, to make mash them to run the juice out. And he fixed a tower there to, to where that he could see if anything was coming. But he did it for this purpose. He wanted part of the fruit. He wanted part of the juice. He wanted part of their, their love. He wanted part of them. Mm -hmm. And we see here this morning that it didn't pan out like that. Because what happened was that they they had to go down to Israel, I mean to Egypt, and they had to go through the desert, and they had to go through all of this, and all of this time, this is the Garden of Eden, or the Garden of the, the, the wine, wine, the uh, vineyard. This is the vineyard moving, and, and it finally wound up in Canaan with, with uh, Joshua and them. And so all of this time, they were disobedient to God. Right. And they, they, they grew wild grapes. They never produced anything as a whole that was pleasing to God. And the thing that we must understand in this reading and in this story, listen, the Gentiles have went about the same condition. The only difference is here that a different plant was planted over in John, I believe it is John 15, where that the angel came to Mary, the virgin, and said that she was going to have a child. Now here is the other, here is the other plant that he put into the, the uh, vineyard of the Gentiles, which was Jesus Christ. Amen. Now there was a difference in the two plants. One of them was by works. They had to do this and do that and keep the law in order to please God. Well, we know that none of them did it. None of the none of the Jew none of, not any of most of the Jews were the, against the law and they didn't obey the law. They uh, even in their sacrifices they wanted to use the ones that were sick, the ones that had broken legs and all of this thing, and they did not serve the Lord like they should. And so we see then this other plant that was planted with Jesus Christ, and it was not by it was not by great uh, law, but it was by grace, which was should have been uh, a whole lot easier for the Gentiles than for the Jews. But the Gentiles stumbled on the same stone that the Israelites did, or in, in as the Israel, as Israel did, and so that both have failed. And serving the Lord like they should. Right. And so here we see uh, in the in the third verse here. Now he says, "And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem, and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard, what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked." that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. So he is, uh, Isaiah is asking, or uh, God is asking to the, the nation of Israel, what more could I have done? Mm -hmm. uh, and the same question uh, uh, appears to us, and it, what more could Jesus Christ have done for us? He, uh, and I know this is the, this is the time of the, the season, I mean, this is the, 
the Easter time. And, and what more could Jesus Christ have done? He went to the cross. He, he, he stayed here upon this earth 33 and a third years. And he walked about and he, he's felt the pains and, and he, uh, he put up with all the agony and the spitting in the face and, and the crucifixion and all this. And he, he, he died on the cross and he was resurrected for our sake. And he, he still, he's still at the right hand of the Father making intercessions for us. Now what more could he do? Right. And, and still the wild grapes grow. And the, the grapes and, and Israel, one day, Israel will recognize him as God and they will understand what all they have done wrong and they'll turn to him and this vineyard will come back into existence and the, the, their, their, their way of, of serving God will change completely and they will be God's people again or a few of them will. But listen. What they do is their business. But what this church does and what the Gentile age does, listen, that's our problem. Amen. And we, uh, we need to have our eyes open to the fact that we're growing wild grapes too. Mm -hmm. And we're just not serving the Lord like we should. And that's the reason why this morning when I try to pray and I, I see all of these things in front of me that I have problems with. These mountains that I have problems with, uh, listen, they wouldn't be there if I was close enough to the Lord. And I'm saying that because of, of me. And I don't know anybody else's problem in here, but I got a sneaky suspicion that we're all made out of the same stuff and we've got the same problem. And so we need to we need to think about this thing uh, that we're, we're we're into. Now, notice. Uh, let me read just a little bit more. He says in verse 5, and now go to, I tell, I will tell you what will do, what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the walls thereof, and it shall be trodden down. Now what has he done? Well, he sent Israel into captivity. Right. He put them and he scattered them just like a, a, a seed over over the whole world. And they're scattered everywhere trying to get back. And, and these are some of the things he, he's taken away. All their protection and, and, and he, the only protection that they've got is he's had mercy on them and watched over them and let other countries take care of them. He says, and it shall be trodden down and I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns, and I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. So we see what, and, and we can see this for several hundreds of years back. It's happened. It's Amen. happened. And it's still happening now. Israel thinks that they're in pretty good shape now, but listen, I'm afraid Israel's got a, another, another rough day coming. And he says here, and uh, uh, I will, I will also come uh, in verse seven. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plants. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression; for righteousness, but behold, a cry. Woe unto them that join house to house that lay field to field till there be no place that they may be placed that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth in my ear ear said the lord of hosts of the truth many houses shall be desolate even great and fair without inhabitants and he goes on to tell the size of a of a vineyard that will will and he, 10 acres of vineyard shall yield one bath and I don't know how much a bath is, but I, I give you a clue. It ain't much. Right. But he says here, and the seed of an omer shall yield an ephod. So here we see their condition. Now they don't realize it. They don't realize it, people. They they just and 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 so many this this morning, so many people are out here celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
by hunting Easter eggs and by t talking about a rabbit laying eggs and things of this nature. Listen, people, it's a, it's a, it's an abominable sin. Amen. It is, it is a disgrace for right. a Gentile race to do such things as this. And so that's why this morning, without the mercies of God, we would not be here. Amen. Now, I want to read something else to you this morning in the book of Psalms. In Psalms 80, in verse 8, Psalms 80 and verse 7. Turn us again, O God of hosts, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out the, the brethren, the heathens, and planted it. Thou preparest room before it, and didst cause it to take deep root, and it filled the land. The hills were covered with the shadows of it, and the brow thereof were like a goodly cedar. So here the psalmist is talking about even after the Lord had sent them down to captivity to keep them from all dying out. And that's what was going to happen because there was a drought down there where they were at and they were going to all die. Right. And so he sent them down to Egypt. And he prepared and he fixed a place for them to stay until the drought was over and they could go back. And so we see here that this is some of the things that, that God has done to for Egypt, for Israel. Uh, he says, Thou, thou preparest room before it, and did cause it to take deep root, and it filled the land. The hills were covered with the shadows of it, and the brow thereof were like the godly cedar, a goodly cedar. She sent out her brow unto the sea, and her branches un unto the river. Why hast thou then broken down her edges, so that all they that pass by the way do pluck her? So we see that Israel in her, in her time was a pleasant, a growthful vineyard. But listen, it just did not last. Right. It just did not last, and this is what has happened to it. And uh, the psalmist says here, why hast thou then broken down her hedges, so that all they that pa which pass by the way do pluck her? The boars or the hogs out of the woods does waste it, and the wild beast of the field does savor it. Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven, and behold, and visit this vine. And the vineyard which thy right hand hath planted, and the branch that thou hast made is strong for thyself. It is burned with fire, it is cut down, they perish at the rebuke of the countenance. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, thy, uh, upon the son of man whom thou madest strong for thyself. So why do we go back from these? Quicken us, and we will call upon thy name. Try us again, O Lord, God of hosts, cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Now, so David here is saying, he's saying this, why have you did this, Lord? Well, David knew why they had done it, he, because they had missed this obedience to God. But he says this, if you'll just, if you'll just spare us, we'll go back and, 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 and try to, and, and listen. After David, Solomon come in, there was peace. And I don't know how, how it went, but listen, it didn't last long. Solomon, right. he gave he gives Solomon all of this all of this understanding and all of this knowledge and all of this. And what did Solomon do? He turned out he he, he was he was a weak, a very weak person before his death. And so the vineyard has continued to fall through the cracks and uh, it's still it's still there. Right. And, and we, we, we we want to we want you to uh, to uh, uh, See something here in in Second Thessalonians. Uh, this might might do do you good. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians three and verse one. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith, 
but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Amen. So this morning, even though we see Israel doing like they have, even though we see the Gentile nation doing like they have, listen, there is still hope for those that will serve the Lord. Amen. He says here, but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your heart into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. And so, in verse 6, notice this. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourself from every brother that walk disorderly, not after the traditions which he received of us. For yourselves know how we ought to follow us, how ye ought to follow us. We have our have not ourselves disorderly, disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread and, and foreknow, but was wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not char be charged with any of you. So here Paul is talking to how that, that he had told the Gentiles these things and that uh, uh, that that there was there is there is hope there is a chance for the Gentiles and uh, uh, I think this morning you know we ought to realize how great a Savior we have. Amen. I was just so amazed and and uh, thrilled at the presence of the Holy Spirit this morning in the song service. Uh, and I you know I have prayed that if He would just just come in and, and fill our hearts. Amen. Listen, I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit here this morning, people, in a great way. And I know that we, uh, we're taking a stand. I know, I, I believe with all my heart this church is taking a stand. And I believe in our homes and all that. We, we, still, we still try to read and we tr still try to uh, pray to the Father. And so just continue doing these things because it's pleasing to the Lord. And I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, read several more things, but one more thing, and, and I'll, 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 I'll close. But you remember in this vineyard, Ahab, what he did about the vineyard. Mm -hmm. And he, he, wanted the, he wanted this, this vineyard that uh, this man had. I'm trying to think what his name was, but I couldn't think of it right now. But anyway, he offered to buy it, and he wouldn't buy it. And so his wife got it for him. And he had, she had the man killed. And the, the vineyard meant a whole lot to this man because, listen, it was an inheritance. Mm -hmm. He could not sell it. He could not give it away because it was an inheritance. And listen, we cannot let the vineyard uh, grow up with briars and things of this nature and have wild grapes on it. We, it's ours. It's ours to, to keep and to hold and to work and to uh, do with it as the Lord's needs us to do and so think upon all these things as we as we try to serve the Lord because uh, I, I just I just know that 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 he's not pleased with me as as much as I could I could do more and uh, I believe this morning that you'll you'll say amen to that because uh, uh, we're all in the same we're right all the same we're all in the same thank you so much for listening to this it was a lot of things in here that I wanted to talk to you about, but, uh, you know, uh, the Lord has uh, had me to read a lot this morning, and what I have read, even though I probably made some missing blunders, it's God's Word. Amen. And uh, think upon this, because uh, there's, still a, there's still a vineyard, uh, and the vineyard, one of these days, will be better than it is now and uh, I hope that I hope that we can uh, all just stay together and uh, serve the Lord and, and through the church thank you all so much for your attention